I'll be talking today about recently digitized primary source material from Latin America and the Caribbean. This digitization builds on a long history at CRL of collecting materials from this region. I'll begin by discussing a bit about the history of CRL's activities related to Latin America and Caribbean materials, as these collections form the basis of the material that is now available for digitization. Then I'll describe some recent initiatives that have increased the amount of digitization of these materials. Since its founding in 1949, the Center for Research Libraries has collected primary sources that are critical for scholarship. Building off the strengths of the original deposit contributed by our founding members, CRL's collection is especially strong in news content, dissertations published outside of the US and Canada, journals, and government documentation. For example, through our core collecting work, which is enabled by the funds that CRL libraries contribute every year, we have built a collection of more than 800,000 non-US, non-Canadian doctoral dissertations in all subject areas. About 5,000 titles are added each year, primarily through our demand purchase program, which responds to specific requests of scholars at CRL libraries. On this slide, you can see the numbers of dissertations we hold along with the years of publication from a sample set of countries. This collection is mostly print materials and it is available for lending to patrons at CRL libraries. Some of these dissertations have been digitized on request and I've included a link to the advanced search of our dissertation collection. Another core CRL collecting area for the last 69 years is newspapers. We hold more than 16,000 newspaper titles from countries in all world regions. The CRL newspaper collection is held in print, microform, and digital formats. And those titles not yet digitized are available for select on-demand digitization. The collection was built through deposits, purchases, and the preservation efforts of the Latin American Materials Project. Just a few of the titles that we have in our collection are shown here. We hold long runs of each title. I would invite you to read a short article in the new Focus newsletter about LAMP's acquisition of digitized copies of La Protesta. Augmenting CRL's core collection work has been the Latin American Materials Project, which is an organization of Latin American studies librarians who use collaborative funding to preserve items they identify as critical for scholarship. These expert librarians founded LAMP in 1975 to preserve materials in danger of being lost or becoming inaccessible. Microfilm has historically been the most cost-effective and stable technology for LAMP's preservation goals, and much of LAMP's collection exists in microfilm held at CRL. LAMP's current work frequently empl employs digitization as a means of preserving important sources. The digitization of LAMP's collection began in 1994 with a grant from the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation to digitize LAMP's collection of Brazilian government publications, which had been preserved earlier on microfilm in cooperation with the Biblioteca Nacional in Rio de Janeiro. A recent LAMP project illustrates how preservation can play an important role in digitization projects. LAMP provided funding to the University of Florida's George A. Smathers Libraries to digitize and make freely available its holdings of the Brazilian newspaper Diario de Pernambuco from 1825 to 1922. This newspaper contains numerous announcements of maritime movements, crop production, legal affairs, and cultural activities. 
The University of Florida had the only holdings in North America, but its copy of the microfilm was at risk due to frequent use by scholars. In order to ensure the longevity of the content, Florida propo proposed that this title be digitized. As part of the project, the University of Florida's digital collections committed to support comprehensive long-term digital preservation, including redundant digital archives, adherence to proven standards, and rigorous quality control methods. Much of LAMP's collection was built over time based on proposals brought by LAMP members who asked for funds to preserve material collected by the members but in need of preservation. LAMP and the other five area materials projects are drivers of important collection development directions at CRL. I would invite you to explore LAMP's diverse collections by searching in the CRL catalog or perusing LAMP's collection description pages. Now I'd like to move into a, a review of recent activities undertaken by CRL to leverage existing collections, collaborations, and partnerships to increase the availability of digital resources on Latin America and the Caribbean. CRL's Global Collections Initiative, which is supported by the Andrew W. Mellon Foundation, is laying the groundwork for a scalable, ongoing program that will support access to source materials for research on regions outside of the US, Canada, and Europe. We have seen that the systems for collecting paper materials from across the world over the past several decades is no longer sufficient to provide scholars with the content they need for cutting edge research. This initiative aims to dramatically expand electronic access to materials from the region, to forge international partnerships at the national level to develop, license, and acquire new digital resources for area studies research. And we're focusing efforts on materials from Latin America and the Caribbean in the pilot phase with plans to fine tune this model and expand it to cover materials from other world regions in, in coming years. The Global Collections Initiative involves three separate but related streams of activity that run in parallel for the duration of the grant period. First, digitization of existing library collections in order to unlock for current scholars that content that is difficult to access and to manipulate. Second, licensing of global databases and collective dealings with publishers, as for-profit entities now control access to a large body of material of interest to scholars. Using the collective weight of scholars in multiple countries, we hope to influence the pricing and terms of availability to this critical content. And the evaluation of web harvesting and alternatives so that we have an independent assessment of current strategies for capturing born digital material relevant to these areas of study. This will determine how well current initiatives are serving the needs of scholars and alternate approaches to preserving web-based materials. With the launch of the Global Collections Initiative, CRL has been emphasizing the digitization of primary source material from Latin America and the Caribbean to support research and teaching at CRL institutions and partners in Latin America and Europe. During the pilot phase of this project, CRL is prioritizing the scanning of Latin American resources from its collections in response to scholars' requests and is focusing on the region in its strategic scanning. New digital resources include newspapers like Prensa Libre and La Nación, diaspora publications such as El Heraldo de México and La Prensa, and literary and cultural magazines, such as 
El Grafico, and Zigzag. And just a bit about these, uh, these journals, these literary and cultural magazines. Um, El Grafico, like many similar literary publications of its time, has had as its readership the cultural elite. El Grafico had a long publication run from 1910 to 1941 and published a mix of political and cultural news, literary contributions, and a variety of illustrations and photographs. Zigzag was founded in Chile in 1905 by the publisher of the newspaper El Mercurio and used state-of-the-art printing techniques to produce a visually appealing publication. Many of Chile's most prominent writers and artists came to be featured in the magazine, which was published for nearly 60 years. Literary and cultural journals from Latin America and the Caribbean have experienced a resurgence of scholarly interest in recent years, as they document political activities as well as the development and assertion of cultural and national identity. The Latin American Journals Project at Cornell University was established as a hub for access to literary and cultural journals published in Latin America in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. CRL has supported this project by digitizing selected journals from its collection and providing the files to Cornell. You can see a couple of sample titles from this project, including from Colombia, Cuba, and Venezuela. CRL supports strategic digi digitization and digital delivery of our collection based on specific scholars' needs. Through digital delivery, CRL fills some borrowing requests from patrons by digitizing individual titles, volumes, or microfilm reels that can be scanned quickly, or for items that are too rare or fragile to lend. The scans are made available in PDF format, incorporating searchable text when the source, when the source material supports OCR processing. With advanced notice, Larger runs of materials can be scanned to meet research or instruction needs, and all digitized items are retained for future consultation by the CRL community. To request digital delivery, please note on your interlibrary loan request that you prefer a digitized copy. We also employ our strategic digitization program to prioritize digitization of content in areas that we note are of high interest to our users. For example, when we see that multiple scholars have requested digital delivery of limited portions of the same newspaper title, we may use strategic digitization funds to have the entire run of that newspaper digitized. And here on the slide, you can see some examples of uh, digital copies of Latin American materials from our collection. CRL has forged partnerships with complementary organizations in the past few years, which extend CRL's library's access to a vast set of additional material. And I will describe a couple of examples. Since 2010, CRL has partnered with LLMC, formerly the Law Library Microform Consortium which gives patrons at CRL libraries access to LLMC's digital collection of primary legal material. As part of CRL's emphasis on expanding Latin American documentation through the Global Collections Initiative, CRL has recommended digitization of up to 2,000 volumes of material from Latin America for inclusion in LLMC digital over the next three fiscal years. The existing digital resources in LLMC Digital span the entire region of Latin America and the Caribbean, with particular strengths in Argentina, Mexico, Peru, Ecuador, and Chile. Additionally, LLMC's special focus 
on the Haiti Legal Patrimony Project and a similar effort for Cuba in partnership with the Digital Library of the Caribbean have produced a significant body of material for the study of these countries. LLMC's Latin American holdings are strongest in legislative publications. Laws, decrees, treaties, and a variety of official administrative announcements were often disseminated through official gazettes. LLMC has sourced these publications from partner institutions, adding new titles and compiling complete runs when possible. And you can see some examples here from the Bahamas, Brazil, and Peru. While under Spanish rule, Latin American countries were governed by a mixture of Spanish codes, royal decrees, and local legislation enacted over time. Newly independent countries took on new codification of civil and criminal law and procedure. LLMC has compiled hundreds of legal codes from the region spanning 150 years and incorporating civil, penal, commercial, military, and rural codes. Some recent additions are shown here. You can find more information about LLMC's collection, including the collection of judicial proceedings, guides, and bibliographies in the recent edition of the Focus Newsletter. In a separate partnership, CRL created the World Newspaper Archive with Redex, a division of Newsbank. This initiative has drawn on the holdings, expertise, and resources of CRL and its member libraries to preserve and provide access to historical newspapers from Latin America and the Caribbean and other world regions. Charter contributors to the World Newspaper Archive have provided funds to support startup costs to digitize holdings of newspapers from the collections of CRL and its members. And these contributors have a voice in setting priorities for future modules. Other CRL libraries may purchase World Newspaper Archive modules at highly favorable rates, scaled to each institution's library materials expenditures costs. There is also a minimal annual access fee. The World Newspaper Archive demonstrates CRL's commitment to library control of these resources. The holdings were sourced from CRL's collection and that of its members, including the University of California, Berkeley, the New York Public Library, the University of Texas at Austin, Harvard University, and several others and are now hosted on a re reliable and robust platform for search and discovery. According to our agreement with Redex, 10 years after the initial release of each module, CRL may ac exercise its right to make the digital collection available on our own platform in its entirety without restriction. We are now making plans to be able to host that content openly on our servers, as we will soon reach that 10-year mark for the earliest World Newspaper Archive modules. Returning to LAMP, I wanted to mention a recent project that has expanded access to digitized material. This is just one of many projects recently completed and now underway with LAMP funds. LAMP supported the digitization of La Gazeta de la Habana for 1849 through 1897 with GAPS from the University of Miami's Cuban Heritage Collection. As the newspaper of record for the last half century of the colonial government, La Gazeta de la Habana contains social, cultural, legislative, and commercial information of interest to scholars. In addition to LAMP, the Latin Americanist Research Resources Project, or LARP, also operates under the CRL umbrella. LARP was launched in 1994, 
originally supported by the Global Resources Program of the Association of American Universities and the Association of Research Libraries. Founded almost 20 years after LAMP, LARP's goals are separate but complementary. Rather than focusing on preserving unique materials and building a discrete collection, as LAMP does, LARP sought new approaches to providing greater access to material of interest to scholars. LARP prioritizes projects that adhere to open access principles, support scholarship in a variety of disciplines, and provide models for future collaboration. LARP involves institutional partners in Latin America whenever possible. LARP has supported the digitization of an extensive set of ephemeral materials from Latin America, which is now hosted by Princeton University in the Digital Archive of Latin American and Caribbean Ephemera. The slide shows a screenshot of the interface and a sac sample document to the left. Princeton has been collecting Latin American ephemera since the mid-1970s. Access to the material had been provided by accumulating and organizing thematic subcollections, creating finding aids, and then microfilming the selected subcollections. That model gradually became unsustainable, and microfilming ended in 2008. With LARP's help, the collection of ephemera is now online. Topics best represented are human rights, elections, gender issues, indigenous peoples, labor, the environment, public health, and religion, all essential to study of contemporary Latin America. LARP also supported the digitization at Tulane University of a small selection of Cuban American radio novellas produced between 1963 and 1970. Recordings of these radio programs are now available through Tulane's digital library. Extensive background is provided on their website, as you can see here at the left. On the same page, you can scroll down to see the programs that are currently available, which are shown in the image that's, that's more to the right. We were pleased to learn recently that Tulane has been awarded more substantial funding from the Council on Library and Information Resources to digitize many more of these radio novella recordings. As you can see, there's a lot of activity at CRL that is resulting in increased online access to research material for Latin American and Caribbean studies scholars. I think we're ready to open this up for questions and discussion of these topics. So please uh, type your questions in the chat box that you see there to the right, and we can talk about some of these things. I see a question about how LAMP works, some of the details of uh, the logistics of LAMP. And um, I can tell you that there are 49 institutional members of LAMP at this time, and each member pays uh, $800. So it's from that pot of money that each year LAMP votes on the proposals that are brought uh, to their annual meeting. Um, and they determine which proposals will be funded for new projects. So uh, LAMP meets every year, as does LARP, at the Salam Conference. Uh, that's the Seminar for the Acquisition of Latin American Library Materials, S-A-L-A-L-M. Um, in 2017, that meeting was at the University of Michigan in May. This coming year, they're meeting uh, in early July in Mexico City. So each each of LAMP and LARP meet in person once a year to deliberate about the proposals before them. Uh, LARP currently has 47 members, and each member, each institutional member, pays $900. So they have, they have their own pot of money from which they can approve projects.
Lamps collection, I can tell you um, it's held at CRL and CRL members and LAMP members may borrow uh, those items. Um, is uh, according to how many titles there are, it's heavily, heavily uh, tilted towards serials, have over 1,500 serial titles. Um, I would imagine in terms of quantity, uh, so microfilm reel equivalents, I would guess that the newspaper collection is, is larger than the serial collection. Um, but those are the kinds of things that LAMP holds.